is mice and mystics. What? No? Oh. Is uh, my and mystics, which satisfies my craving for cheap craving for uh, dungeon crawling. And the good thing about it is that it plays as a solo experience. So you can play one player, or you can play up to four players. And it has cheese in it. So my review is plainly going to be looking at this game from a, a one-player perspective because I'd normally play this game on my own. Anywho, Mice and Mystics is an adventure style game. It's dungeon crawling, it's fighting monsters, it's finding treasures. Uh, but most of all, it's playing through this one storybook, which is made up of 11 cheeses, uh, chapters. And each chapter will use a different variety of mice. You'll fight different monsters, you'll find different treasures, and there's a very deep story in this game. So you have to play this game Chapter 1, Chapter 2, Chapter 3, Chapter 4, Camembert 5. Now a little bit about this wonderful Disney-esque story. There's a prince named Colin whose father, the king, has fallen in love with an evil sorceress. Colin can see that she's evil, but the king can't. Before he knows it, Colin's thrown into a prison and his father is in a coma. Now Colin, with the help of his friends who are also in prison, turn into mice because it's the only way to escape the maximum security stockade and escape to the Los Angeles underground. Today they survive as mice of fortune and uh, sorry that's the Gorgonzola talking but anyway that's where the adventure begins they turn themselves into mice and try and put an end to the evil sorceress's schemes each chapter will have its own mission to do and it'll tell you how to lay out the tiles and then basically, from your starting tile, you put your heroes on, and you basically play one tile at a time. You'll put any monsters that it says need to be placed. You'll also see if there's any special items that you can be found in this room, because the mission might state that this room, there's a special item that you can find. There might be some special rules that apply to that room as well, like you can't move through this or you can't do that. There may even also be a boss fight which will turn up later on, or there might be some more flavoured text that you'll have to read out. And then once you've cleared the room, and you move on to the next one, you do the same. You do the same setup. You, what monsters, what special rules, or if there's any secret special items that you can find, etc, etc. And the good thing about this game is you don't have to traverse from one room to another. You can even traverse floors. So you could go through the drain here, and fall directly into the water there and then once you get out of the water there you can traverse here so how does the game play? well the game plays in rounds and in each round each character will have two actions that they can perform now if you're a fan of Final Fantasy's tactics you'll be glad to hear that there's like a chronological line an order of which characters can go let's take a closer look at my clock every time you enter a room you take all your characters that are playing and any monsters that are in that room you create a little deck of these cards and then you shuffle them and then you deal them out and that creates your order of chronology so in this case Magnus would go first followed by Tilda then the rats and then Lily that would be one round and then it would go back to Magnus if the monsters are killed you remove it and you shuffle everything up now if there are still no monsters in the room and it gets past Lily's turn what will happen is some time will be added to the clock in the form of cheese. And when this clock fills up, trouble will occur. This game is all about time. Your story will tell you what page it finishes on. So for example, this story will finish on page seven and then you start on page one. If ever the clock gets filled up 
What will happen? Well, this sound timer moves to there. And if there's a surprise attack, if it says so in the rules, you take an encounter card and then that's the monster that appears and attacks you. And then you add that monster to the timeline. And as the story goes on and you get more and more cheese on your clock and the clock fills up, these pages will advance. And as you can see from the encounter card, the monsters will get harder and harder to defeat. If ever the sand timer reaches the top, game over. Now the actions you can take are the kind of basic actions that you can find in any game with this ilk. You can move, you can search and you can fight. And all these things require skills and attributes and dice rolls. For example, Filch here, he can move three spaces and he rolls a dice. And whatever the number on the dice says is how many extra spaces he can move. So that would be two plus three is five. That would be three plus three, which is six. Whereas Nez here, he can only move one space plus whatever he rolls. Attacks are the same. So you roll basically the amount of dice that it says you can attack with. And you defend with the amount of dice that it says that you can defend with. Obviously you've got skills as well. You've got life points, which will help you. And obviously whenever you attack, if you're doing a ranged attack, you need to roll bows to attack. If you're ever doing a, a physical attack, you need to do swords. And if you're ever defending, you need a shield. The other thing that you might get is some cheese when you're attacking. If you're attacking and you roll cheese, you get to add some cheese to your character. And then you can use this cheese when you get six of them to buy another skill. And then you can use cheese to use that skill. Ho ho ho, cool, huh? But the bad news is if the monster is defending and he rolls cheese, it gets added to the clock, which makes time go faster, which makes your job harder. Movement is a wonderful thing in this game. You can only go from one space to another if the base that you're stilting, uh, stood on uh, can reach it. For example, that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four. So it would take Filch four to get to the tree, whereas you could not traverse to that one. Whereas, say a big monster, he can traverse quite easily one there, uh, two there and three there. You can make it in three moves. The automation sequence for the enemy is a very simple one. Wesley Dell the monster. When it's the turn for the monsters to move and attack, they move, if it's a melee, to the nearest enemy and then they roll the dice and attack. If they are already next to, they just attack. Whereas for ranged, they will just attack and not move. They will only move if there's no line of sight. Simples. There's a big deck of search items which you can find on your adventures, which will have uh, weapons, which you can make you more stronger. You can have accessories, which give you special powers. You've got armor, which give you defense a bit more. But there's also traps, which will make you lose your cheese, for example. Or there'll be ruses, which will be strategic maneuvers that you can perform so you can have another go. And then there's objects that you can combine together and use, like the fork and the raisin here, to make a catapult. So you can attack enemies with a big weapon. In the box you will find a nice amount of platform boards. Um, there's lots of cards for your equipment and your skills and encounter cards. Um, there's a bit light on the old miniature side, but that is compensated with a load of tokens which you can add to a miniature and all of a sudden this warrior rat is now an elite warrior rat! And then if you want to later on you can change him into Captain Verst like Superman, something like that. Um, the box interior could do with some love because it's just really poor and you have to use baggies just to put all your components in which is... How did that get in there? So there's an overview of Mice and Mystics. Let's sum up by saying Mice and Mystics is a cheese board that every dungeon crawling solo player should be nibbling on. It's a very well written, dark art kind of Don Belus Secret of the Nymph meets Dragon's Lair. And it is a solid dungeon crawl. 
Now playing this game solo, you may find it hard to retain all the rules after your first one, two or ten playthroughs. That's because there's a lot of rules which are instinctual, normal dungeon crawling rules and there's some new ones. And every now and again you'll enter a room and there'll be a different rule for that room or a different rule for a certain creature. So the game will constantly change, so be prepared to do a lot of reading. So as I've said, this has a very solid dungeon crawl theme, but it also has this children's story kind of theme as well. So is this game aimed at children? Well, according to the English version, it's for children the age of seven and up, where is according to my French version, it says from the age of 14 and up. I would recommend somewhere in the middle due to the fact that there's a lot of text to read and um, if you're just one parent and a couple of children playing this game, that is a lot of work for you. Reading the story, reading the cards and telling the, 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 your children what characters do what, it can be a handful. The game has some really nice logical mechanics and some new mechanics as well. From the placement and movement of pieces on the board to the chronological order of play. There's also the clock, which is ticking the seconds away, which puts pressure on the players. And each mission has its own unique events, which really spice up the game. Like, for example, there's one mission where you play as all six of the characters. And then you do the same mission, but you split the group into two, and you go two different directions to get to the same goal. Wow, huh? Everything about the production of this game is of the highest quality from all the components, the cards, the artwork, everything is high quality uh, apart from the box insert. <sighs> what can I say? Um, a thing that the game could have done with is a quick reference sheet but luckily you can print them out from online. Um, and one thing which annoyed me is there's some things missing from the rules. For example, I was playing one mission and it told me that I've obtained Ms. Maggie's token. But it makes no mention of what Mrs. Maggie's token looks like. And so you have to like use logic to try and figure out which one it is. Can you figure it out? The campaign is an epic adventure and it's a very well written epic adventure. You have these wonderful characters and you have this wonderful dialogue which goes on in this wonderful world. It feels like a film. It feels in the same style as maybe Krull or The Princess Bride. It is a fun family film. But that's where one of its drawbacks is. You have to play the missions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You can't just jump into a mission because you would break the story. Again, your characters would not have developed and had the skills that they need or the weapons that they need to be successful. And you need success to make any gaming experience fun. Now let's talk about success. If you wish to succeed in each campaign, you're going to need a moderate amount of luck. Because everything you do involves... Rolling dice. When you attack, when you search, and when you move. There's nothing worse than you need to run across a room, but all you can roll is ones, which means that you practically walk and the crow pecks you to death. There's nothing worse than you need to search the room for a disguise so you can go through the next room filled with rats without being attacked, but you can't find the item, but you have to move on because time is against you. There's nothing worse than you need to roll ranged attacks and you roll melee attacks. And then your opponent rolls cheese, which fills up the wheel of time. And then there's a surprise attack, which means there's another monster for you to take out. And, uh, yeah, your adventure ends here. Now, my final verdict for Mice and Mystics, and you have to bear in mind, this is as a solo playing experience only. I give this 7.5 out of 10. Why? Well, basically, I felt that when I was playing the game, I was rolling dice and reading the rules. Rolling dice, looking at the, the book. Rolling dice, reading some more campaign. Rolling dice, and it, I can get that same experience with one of these, yeah? But there's minis with this, and there's multiple characters, and it, there's a very interesting, well writ story here. So that augments it, but it's the dice rolling and the continuous rule reading and 
reading the story of each each room it just sours the experience quite a bit now I'm sure that if I played this game with a group of people my score would be a bit higher because it's not all just relying on one person to remember all the rules you've got everyone else to banter off of and even slip into the roles of some of the characters you've got your typical Nez who's the the warrior and you've got Filch which is the typical thief and they're always bickering and you could import that into the game with other characters but as a solo experience as I said it's good it's good to play a dungeon crawl on your own but there's a lot of dice rolling. If they take it a bit out, then it would probably be a, a bit sweeter. Um, so, how does that sound to you? Do you enjoy dungeon crawling? Do you love good stories? Uh, do you do it on your own, this dungeon crawling? Uh, and do you like a lot of dice rolling? Well, if you do, then this game is for you. Also, there's some expansions that you can download, and there's some expansions that you can go out and buy. I don't have any of these at the moment, so I can't give you my opinions, but um, they, they sound like they're worth checking out. So, uh, if that sounds good to you, check out Mice and Mystics. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.